Welcome back. It is now time for our first speaker. He is a performance and well-being specialist by the name of Chevy Ruff, and he will literally give you all the mental tools that you need to go the distance, to have all the self-belief that you need. And like Scott Mitchell in our last panel said, um, make sure that running stays enjoyable and doesn't become another one of those life pressures. Chevy, over to you. Thank you very much. Um, well, look, it's so, so wonderful to be here with you guys today. Um, first of all, well, great, great introduction. My name is Chevy Ruff. I'm a wellbeing and performance coach. Um, I essentially help people connect the dots between mind and body to help them unlock performance in life, at work, or wherever it may be, friends and family, personal interests, and so forth. Um, I am also a running coach. That's how I started my career kind of five years ago. I haven't done that so much over the last couple of years. So bear with me today as I kind of brush off some of the knowledge and uh, share it with you guys. I always like to give a, a couple of things here. Firstly, you know, grab a pen and paper. You know, I'm going to try and give you guys some nuggets, some actionable takeaways that you can use in your journey today. And as we all know, ideas are fleeting, right? They come and they go and you're going to jump onto the next talk and hopefully there's going to be some other good ideas there for you. So really important just to grab a pen and paper, write some ideas down and review them at the end of the talk, review them halfway through the day, review them at the end of the day and kind of think about how can I turn these into actionable tasks that I can introduce into my training and also turn off those distractions as well. Turn off those emails, turn off those mobile phone. It's a really interesting number for you. The cost of distractions to our focus is 23 minutes or somewhere between 18 to 23 minutes. That's what happens when we look at the research. When you're focused on one task, you jump to another task and you jump back to another ta that original task again, it can take up to 23 minutes for you to get back your original level of focus and that's something that your mind and your body is going to need over the coming weeks as you prepare for 26.2 miles and every time you refocus your mind it comes at an energy cost you burn calories as your mind recalibrates and tries to focus in on that task so again it's a great tool um, and always think about that now what i will say and if it's okay with you guys is i always kind of do this as a coach whenever i walk into a new room how are you my job as a coach is to get past that initial, I'm okay, right? Because we're all so good at that. We're all going so good at wearing a mask and pretending ev like everything's okay. So as a coach, a promise that I made to myself is that I would always walk into a room and be completely truthful with my coaches, my family, people on a live stream as to how I'm feeling. And today, I am feeling incredibly anxious. It's been a pretty crazy week. I've been moving house. I've had to drive down here from out of town today. I've got such love for the guys here at London Marathon. I've got some great history with them. I just want to do a good job and I want to do a good job for you guys. So my fear of failure, my fear of not doing a good job, my fear of not helping you kind of brings my nerves up here. So it might just take a couple of minutes for me to slow down or not, then we're in trouble and you're just along for the ride, guys. But I always just like to share that. And I think we can look at that and ask, well, what's a lesson here, right? I want to kind of ask yourself a question. How many times have you been massively stressed? I'm gonna ask the guys in the studio here to be honest and put their hands up. How many times have you been massively stressed? Has, has life given you the one and twos? It's been a really busy day, a really stressful day, and all you've wanted is a cuddle from your mum. I got one hand up. Or a cuddle from your dad, or a cuddle from your puppy, or your cuddle from a friend, or you just wanna to speak to a good friend about it. Well, here's the thing, right? That's pretty amazing. And that's not just some wishy-washy psychological feeling. That's your body releasing oxytocin when you're stressed in equal measure to adrenaline and cortisols, which are also great hormones that we need in life to get us from A to B and survive. But it releases oxytocin. And when we're, oxytocin is known as the love hormone. It's designed to bring us closer together as our tribe because evolution says that we're better together than apart. So that desire to want to talk to someone, to want to be close to someone, is your body's physiology setting up that psychology to bring you closer to other human beings. So here's the thing, you're going to go through a lot of stressful time over the last next few months. It's going to be hard and you're going to feel like you have to be the perfect runner. You're going to feel like, you have to feel like you've got everything together. I can train for this and I can do, keep, raise the kids and I can do my job and I can be a great boyfriend, girlfriend, lover, whoever, whatever it may be. And when you feel that urge to share with someone that actually you're struggling, actually it's hard, that's your physiology releasing that oxytocin and saying, hey, you're gonna feel much better when you share how you feel. So that's tip number one, it's okay to not be okay. It's okay to say you're struggling with the marathon. And when you do feel that urge to speak to someone, it's not a weakness, it's a strength. So speak to them, share with them, 
ask for their help, ask for their support, and you know that you feel better when you have that conversation. So there you go, there's tip number one for the day. So in 2017, the reason I'm here is in 2017, I was asked to take and coach a wonderful bunch of human beings to run the London Marathon. I took 10 runners, all struggling with various mental health conditions, to tackle on 26.2 miles in conjunction with the London Marathon team, um, with their partner charity at the time, and also with BBC. It was a BBC One documentary and it was called Mind Over Marathon. It was great. I met people like Rianne. Rianne, unfortunately, I think seven years ago, um, her baby boy George passed away of pneumonia. And then the next uh, three days later, her husband walked out and unfortunately took his own life. And through that, she suffered a lot with anxiety, with depression, was very scared to go out of the house. We had other people like Claudia who suffered quite heavily from things like OCD. We had uh, Georgie, a detective from uh, Wales, who one day um, kind of uh, felt like it was hard for her to carry on and um, you know, took her to a very low place and uh, really reached out for help as, uh, uh, with her colleagues within the police force and so forth. So it was a very challenging bunch of individuals uh, or kind of individuals who had a very really challenging time in their lives and we took them on a journey. We wanted to prove the kind of correlation between movement, running a marathon and improving your mental health and it was, it was really great. And the thing that I learned though on that show, the thing I earned was that, you know, even though we had these individuals with, you know, serious mental health conditions at the, the, the kind of far end of the spectrum, um, as it were, what I realized with those individuals at the core of it, they were not too dissimilar to all the runners that I was meeting every day. And there was a common thread. And I was really seeing that. And the common thread was that, you know, we all have this internal chatter about not being good enough. We all have this fear of failure. We all are worried that if we're gonna take on a marathon, we're gonna to be too slow. We're not gonna be good enough. We're gonna be the last person across the finish line. So there is a common thread amongst us all as human beings. And as much as I was working with these wonderful guys who, like I said, were at the far ends of the spectrum of mental health challenges, like I said, we're all not too dissimilar. So today I'm gonna to try and give you some guiding points um, and lessons I learned from them and also lessons I tried to coach them through as a coach to help you develop the resilience needed for the uh, miles ahead. And we're gonna split it into three points and we're gonna railroad and rush our way through because we haven't got much time today. So grab that pen and paper. And for me, the three parts that we're gonna look at is what can we do to keep our mind under control before the marathon, during the marathon, and after the marathon. So pre-marathon. The first thing that I will say to you, and the first thing that I say to any runner who is battling their own rational mind, who's feeling really challenged, really scared about the road ahead, is remembering the road cannot take you anywhere that you have not already been in life. And I'm gonna repeat that because if you take away one thing from today, I want this to be your mantra. The road cannot take me anywhere that I have not already been. You don't need a coach. You don't need me. You don't need us experts. You have got this far in life by managing a lot of stress, a lot of challenges, a lot of low points, a lot of negative emotions, a lot of challenging emotions, a lot of people. And through that, you've built up an algorithm of experience where you know how to look after you. You know how to deal with stressful situations. You know what to do when you're feeling tired and a bit drained, that maybe you shouldn't go out tonight, get a good night's sleep. I probably need to be eating a little bit healthier. I know my knee's niggling, so I should probably be doing my squats more, doing my stretching more. I probably shouldn't do so much. You know what you need to do. So remember that when you're looking forward and you're worried and you're stressed, remember the road can't take you anywhere that you haven't already been. Reflect back on a time that you've been through a similar challenge. What did you do to get through that challenge? What have you done when you're really extremely tired historically? What have you done when you felt doubt? How did you navigate through that problem historically? Create a checklist, actions that you can follow and use that checklist to get you through the challenges in front of you. Tip number one. Tip number two is to really understand the difference between your inside view and your inside noise. Leaning into a marathon is tough. Again, we have this doubt within us that we're not good enough, we're not capable, we're never gonna get there. And the head can start to just play games with us. And suddenly this idea of wanting to do better for ourselves is just overshadowed by this negative conversation. And here's the thing, that negative conversation is fed by culture, is fed by noise out on social media. 
we're constantly seeing pictures of the perfect runners, um, you know, the perfect training programs. Everyone's always out. They're looking great on their runs. They're looking brilliant. They're putting in great times. And that outside noise starts to step in the way of our inside view. And the inside view was that you just wanted to do something good, right? You, you listened to your algorithm, you listened to your subconscious, and it said, you need to start moving more, you need to train for something. And you thought, yeah, I'm gonna start putting two foot in front of the other. But suddenly that outside noise of culture or people telling you what success looks like. How many times has someone asked you on a Monday morning or you've gone running on the weekend or, you know, what time are you gonna run your marathon in? You know, how fast are you planning on doing it? Who cares? Who cares? This is you, you're doing it for you to feel better about yourself, to make change. So don't let the outside noise trample your inside view and turn your inside view into inside noise. Keep hold of that inside view, that original reason. Ask yourself why, why are you doing this? And hold on to that and keep that written down. And every time the noise gets too loud from outside where people are trying to convince you it's about time and this and doing it all this, no, no, no. I'm running for me because it makes me feel good. It makes me a better version of myself. It helps me show up for the people that I love. The next thing to remember is a quick one is remembering that training is stress and you're about to spend a lot of energy and energy is stress trying to get through the next four months. Now what happens when stress starts to rise up through our system, we basically start to come from more of a kind of place of survival within our brain, right? The kind of fight, flight or freeze. And we can think about this, we can look at the brain, we can look at uh, work by Dr. Dan Siegel, and we can think about the brain, we can think about the deep rooted parts of the brain, the, the brain stem, the limbic system, right? We call this kind of like the mouse and the lizard brain. And sitting over that, keeping that under control is the monkey mind, is the prefrontal cortex. And the frontal cortex is in charge of all the good stuff, right? Strategic thinking, creativity, empathy, attachment, love, all these kind of things, rational thinking. And what happens is the more that stress rises up through our system, the more that we start to lose control of our kind of frontal cortex, we start to flip our lid and we start to come from a place of survival, the mouse and the lizard, right? These guys are just looking for ways to survive kind of throughout the day and running away from danger, avoiding pain, right? lashing out at people when we're angry or upset. So we want to try and kind of keep those under control. And the best way that we can keep coming from this frontal cortex is by managing stress. The best way we can have better rational conversations with ourselves is by managing stress. So make sure you're focusing on your recovery. Recovery is king. Your body needs that to get through the runs, to repair, to heal, to get stronger, but to also ensure that you can keep being rational about the road ahead. So that was pre, what did we have? We had the road can't take you anywhere that you can't already be in, inside view versus inside noise, stress rest plus energy. I'm sorry if I'm shaking a lot on this chair. I'm used to standing guys, this is, this is really great. So um, spinning around. So next up, during. Uh, what can we do to help ourselves during the race? Well, during the race, the thing that we can do is before the race, um, which is we can train the mind the same way that we train the body start focusing on some kind of visualization work. Now, it doesn't have to be as all hippy dippy or whatever it may be, but we can actually train our brain to go through situations. So when we get to those challenges, those problems, the brain's already been here and it's less of a challenge for them. So start trying to do some visualization work every day or kind of every other day or every few days or once a week, just sit there and kind of go through the race in your head. You know, what happens when I'm feeling tired, I'm exhausted? What happens if I feel a niggle? What happens if someone barges me? What happens if someone's like, bought a bottle in my head? How am I gonna respond? See the colors, see the lights, feel the positivity, feel your energy on the day. See your friends in the crowd cheering for you. See the colors and the sounds and the sights and take yourself through any challenges that you might have on the day and think, how am I gonna handle that challenge? What that problem and visualize yourself coming through it into a more positive mindset. Breathe through it. Again, what did I say to you guys before, right? Learn about how to breathe, your breathing mechanics, because when we breathe right, when we breathe more efficiently, our system is less stressed, it's more efficient at managing energy. So when we're more, less stressed and more efficient at managing energy, where are we coming from? More of our higher mind as opposed to these places for survival. So focus on kind of working on your breath, your breathing mechanics, right? Plenty of stuff online, some great coaches out there, lots of content. How can I breathe more efficiently as a runner? Because that helped regulate my mind through the race and leading up to it. The most important thing is be realistic to yourself and be kind to yourself on your day. You might put a lot of pressures on your shoulder about where you should come in the pack, but remember this. The first person across the finish line, whether you're the first person or the last person, your medal is worth the same. And yes, it takes a lot of mental effort, energy and stress to be up the front, to run those fast times, to be an elite athlete. But you know what? It takes a lot of energy to be out on that road for six, seven hours or whatever it may be as well. You are a mental athlete. You're a physical athlete. You are an athlete. So be kind to yourself. Post. 
We've got five minutes, we've got four minutes left, guys. So we're gonna, we're gonna roll through this. Post-marathon, I think the most important thing is to, again, and it's a really cheesy thing, but be kind to yourself. When you're feeling low and you've got the marathon blues, remember you've just been through a very stressful few months and your body is gonna need time to recover and repair for that. And the more tired your body is, the more energy it has spent, the more stress that it is, the more the recovery that it needs to go through, the less you're gonna be coming from that kind of part of the brain that's more rational. So when you're trying to be irrational with yourself and saying, I should be back to five runs a week, four runs a week, just take time and let your system settle, focus on your rest and your movement will come back again. You are not the sum of 26.2 miles. Remember that, you are not the sum of 26.2 miles. It's not a win or lose scenario, right? It's not about your outcome over effort, it's about your effort. It's about the fact that you're moving yourself in the right direction in life, you're trying to be a better version of yourself. It's not about the times and the medals, it's just about that effort that you put in and trying to win more days than you lose. The final two things, I'm going to be quickly here, right? What can I do to help set myself up for the future? The second thing that you can do, and if you're running this in person, is whatever you're running from, I want you to leave it in the tunnel on embankment as you come up the final stretch. And I really want you to think about that. Why do I run? Why do I move? Because a lot of us are moving for really personal reasons, whether it's to raise money for a loved one, whether it's to feel better about ourselves, going through big change in life. What is your why? And when you're, getting to black, when you're getting to the embankment, when you're getting to this big long tunnel, just up towards the final stretches, when you run through this tunnel, I want you to leave whatever you're running from behind. And as you come out of the tunnel into the light and the, the crowd's clapping for you and cheering, I want you to think about taking every new step towards your future and your new future. It's a very symbolic moment. A marathon journey is more about, more, more about you and where you are in life. So it's important to have a symbolic moment where you leave your challenges behind in that tunnel and cross that finish line a new you. And the final thing, the final thing to help your mind move forward from the marathon is back to that oxytocin thing. It's about to the fact that we're designed to be closer to other human beings. So when you're thinking about your next challenge, your next medal, that's really great. Like I want you to go out there, I want you to keep doing races, but you know what might really help you move things forward? what might you really need at the moment and what society needs at the moment is for you not necessarily to run a marathon straight away or a 5k PB or 10k PB or another half marathon or do an ultra marathon. It's for you to take all the experience and knowledge that you've gained during training, the lessons that you've learned and move it forward. Take your mum, your friend, your family member, take a colleague, someone that you know has been inspired by your journey, has been asking you questions about your journey, and take them on their first couch to 5K. Connect with them, celebrate them, share a park run with them. Because as human beings, we're designed to be closer together and we have never been much any more disconnected. So when you're feeling low and the, the mental game you're losing, move it forward and connect and share with someone else. Wow, we got there. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Hey, I want people. I, thank you so much. Thank you. Shabby, that was just amazing. I was on the sidelines, like, making notes. Good, making good, notes. good. And um, we have to thank Chevy because um, to deal with stresses, moved house yesterday. Yes, we But did. here to talk about yes. the rational brain. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and yes. how you can get your mind I'm coming from a very irrational place at the moment, <laughs> but we'll, we'll give it a go. So we've had um, questions um, coming in, so thank you. Just a reminder, you, you can ask all our speakers and our expert today um, questions just by using the um, box function at the bottom of the main stage page. We have, um, first of all for Marie, any advice for virtual runners taking on their own marathon without crowds and without a running buddy? Yes, and this is actually, and, and as I was kind of talking, and, and forgive me, you know, when I'm kind of talking about how to keep your mind in the game and leaving it in the tunnel, I, was, I kind of suddenly realised, yes, we have got virtual. I'm getting, something I'm getting used to is the yeah. fact that we are, you know, I, I do celebrate you, you individuals who are out there doing this by yourself on the 26.2 on the day. So my, my, my advice is this, is that, there's a couple of things that, first of all, is, I, I'm, it's a hard one because I know there's a lot of people doing these things alone, right? They are alone. They haven't got necessarily friends and family. Definitely when we train, when we train sometimes and we're going through changing ourselves, the people around us can be the hardest things to deal with, right? They want us to come down the pub or they don't like seeing that change in us. So I understand that, but let's take a step back for the moment and say, I'm sure there are people in your life who want to celebrate you. I'm so, sure there are people who want to give you a round of applause and who want to see you tackle 26.2 miles. But again, in your head, you think that you're a burden. 
You don't want to ask them. You don't want them to ask them to come out and stand on a street corner by themselves and cheer you on or to be there at the finish line with you. So for me, if you're running on that 26.2 miles, ask people, talk to them. And I'm pretty sure that most of them will say, Do you know what, we'll come out, we'll bring our picnic and so forth and we'll go for it. And I think the second thing is that if you haven't got that opportunity, it's just the road can't take you anywhere that you're already have been. You've shown resilience. This isn't a marathon. The marathon is the life that you've been through to get you to where you are right now. I know you can run on that road for four, five, six hours by yourself. I know you've got it in you. You've already got the endurance. But practice and rehearse that within that visualization that you've got, right? When you're feeling low, when you're feeling lonely, run that through in your head once a week. What do I do? I pick myself up. I remind myself while I run. I think of my posture. I think of my body. Yeah. And every time I pass a, a post or a, a, a traffic light, I say, well done. Because when we, when we say well done and we pat ourselves on the back, we actually close the reward circuit and we release little bits of dopamine. We can self-reward. Like, how cool is that? Right? I said, I said, well done for putting my pants on this morning, right? honestly. <laughs> I'm going to go uh, out here today, just pat myself yeah, 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 on the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So pat myself on the back. <laughs> um, okay, let's get a few, uh, some of these questions. Um, okay, after every training session, I always ask the question of whether I'll be able to do it. Is, it, is that normal? Is that a normal question? Yeah, to be? yeah. I'm sure we've got, how many people have we got online at the moment? Um, quite a few. So, um, and I, I whether, you're, whether I've worked with top tier athletes, right um or whether i've worked with my mum trying to come out of lockdown lockdown and go for longer walks during the day kind of a few times a week there's always this question of can i do it that's a that's a perfectly normal thing as human beings because if we just run out of the cave trying to kill a woolly mammoth to feed our family you know and we had the bravado and we never asked ourselves whether we can do this we'd probably be running into danger more often than not so it's perfectly natural it's your body's way of protecting you and just getting you to press pause and say hey i just need you to check whether this is the right thing for you to do and the fact is that training is a stress it's a lot of energy so you you think that you're missing motivation i'm like you're not missing motivation i know you want to do this but your subconscious is going to constantly try and protect you from spending energy because i already know that you're spending a lot of energy in life as it is yeah and you haven't got two separate energy tanks, one for training and one from life. It all comes from the same place. So when your body is questioning you, and remember this, what's the most trusted resource that we have in life? What's the most trusted relationship that we have in life? What's the one thing that we can count on to be honest with us no matter what? Our bodies. Yeah. It will tell you when it's tired. It will tell you when it's exhausted. It will tell you when it's injured. It will be very direct and open with you. So it's just asking you that question. So then if you feel doubt, normal, no, I'm good, I'm fine. I appreciate you checking, body. Let's get it on. We've got this. And I can tell you, we've got 10,000 people that are registered for this event today. Um, Nothing scary about that <laughs> at all. I'm glad I didn't know that beforehand. We have got an anonymous question here, but um, it, I'm a 70 year old runner. Thank you for putting it in. And often question myself, do you have any advice for, uh, for older runners? Yeah. Um, you've got a lot more experience to draw on than younger runners. I, I guarantee that I could sit there and talk about the last 70 years of your life and you could show me where you have shown an amazing resilience in your life. Amazing strength to manage stress and I'm sure there's been through a million times where you have doubted yourself and overcome those doubts and you have pushed through to make it here to 70. Right? So when you're doubting yourself, think back to a time where you also doubted yourself. What did you do? How did you overcome that doubt? What did you learn? What advice would you give to that individual again now? Write it down on paper. <laughs> yeah. You know, take yourself through it step by step. Get out of your own psychology and onto paper or talk to a friend about it. Let them be an objective feedback loop. Because when we get out of our own psychology, we kind of, how many times do this, right? Oh, as a friend, you should probably listen to your own advice. Right? That's because we get out of our own psychology. We get out of the algorithm and then we get this feedback that actually makes sense. So I think my sense is like, look back on your past history and think about you know, where you've demonstrated the skills that you think that you need to move forward. And also, you know, what I do say is, because I, I think as we fight our bodies as we get older, I've just turned 40, I'm not saying I'm an old man, but there's a lot of, you know, I'm very different now than I was at 30. The problem is I compare, right? I compare myself to Chev who ran the London Marathon seven years ago, or, you know, the lifting the weights, I, I compare myself, but it was a different playing ground. I didn't have the same responsibility, stresses, challenges that I do now, and plus age is a factor. So I think it's about being kind to yourself, don't compare and look at the playing field that you're on, not the playing field that you once played on. Yeah. I'll take that. Great advice. There is a question that has come through that I think is really pertinent because m m 
so many people run 26.2 miles, the London Marathon, for reasons that are beyond self, um, in memory of someone or for a, a, a huge emotive cause. How can you manage the emotions on the day if you are running for something massive like the memory of someone? That's ask, Marie, thank you. Ask what advice they would give you. And I guess I'll get real quite emotional then. I better say, you know, I, if you're, there's a, there's a couple of things here, but I think first of all is if you're running for that individual, how would they be celebrating you on that day? They're your angel on your wings, right? Talk to them. I want to see runners running, chatting to themselves as they're all running, right? Talk to them. Have a conversation with them at mile 20. What do I need to do, Bob? Yeah. What do I need to do, Yvonne? What advice? And I think I get into that, you know? And like I say, when you're running through that tunnel, and whether it's a virtual tunnel or somewhere in your you know, when you're running through at mile 25 or 25, I hope that route hasn't changed, by the way. Otherwise, there are people like, what tunnel am I talking about? It's down by embankment, right? You know, the, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's there, the there, there. When you're running through that tunnel, let it go. You know, celebrate, and as you're coming out into the light, then you take that rest of that journey by yourself and you run for your reasons. Yeah. We couldn't cry now, Chevy. I, don't, I, I kind of hit myself then. I was like, God, it's been an emotional week. I was <laughs> like, it's because I know, I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, let's not do it. Well, I, I've never seen so many tears as I do at the end of the London Marathon, but it's an incredible experience. It's this outpouring of um, community, emotion, achievement, and it's, it's quite staggering. Well, if I may, and that's, that's the, the final thing is, it's, it's and I'm going to say this, I say this in the right way, that, that when people say to me I'm running for a charity or someone that I love and stuff like that, I'm like... Okay, cool. That's a great first answer that you're giving ev to everyone. Get rid of that. Why? Why are they important to you because of this? Why? Yeah. Why? Because it actually right, is you, you might think that you're running for someone else, but you're not. You're running for you. And a lot of the time it's because you need to heal. You need to repair. You need to recover. You need to make sense of what's happened. That's your own driver. It's part of your journey. So don't put it on them. You need to listen to you and listen to why you're doing this because that's the emotion that comes out at the end because we drop all the masks and the truth comes out. And that's the therapy and the beauty of running a marathon is that journey and it takes you on, that blueprint it gives you to who you are and helps you learn about yourself. Phenomenal stuff, Chevy, thank you. Safe, thank you. Safe journey back to the new house. Yeah, I don't know, I've got to figure out where I am. I put it in the sat nav. <laughs> Oh, so that was uh, our first week and I'm, I'm sure that you've just got so much from it. Um, I knew today was going to be a big day and uh, for reasons that Chevy just touched on, but um, it's such an incredible day come October 3rd and the Meet Events Virtual is about getting you there in the best shape possible. So I also want to tell you to go to the various booths that are about our partners and about our sponsors, including the um, New Balance booth where there are there's live video chat, it's interactive. They can give you all the advice you need on what trainers um, that you're running in. And so make sure that you go and get all the advice and seek all the offers that are there as well. After this break, we will be joined by BBC News presenter Louise Minchin, so stay with us. See you in a moment. <laughs>